Let's go ahead and get into this national championship game, man. I, this is this is this is the bread and butter of this conversation. Georgia can, has the opportunity to go ahead and be back to back national champions. Um, th- th- this is going to be a huge game. I want you to talk about what, what do you what do you feel the the chances are? I mean, you guys, I think this is the biggest spread uh, ever in history for a national championship game. You guys are fourteen point favorites. With what you saw from TCU against Michigan, do you do, does that add to your worry? Like I know before that you probably were like, oh, if we get TCU, like we're, it's money. But after seeing that game, are you more worried? Yeah, I mean, I think you got to be because because how good uh, Michigan was. I mean, they were the number one run defense in the country coming into that game, and and TCU ran all over them. Kendra Miller potentially being hurt, like that exactly. could be big for TCU. Big but I don't know. You look at TCU, like I look at what George just did to Ohio State, like. Like, what was the winning formula for Ohio State? Like, honestly, what's been the winning formula for anyone who's, like, beaten Georgia in the last, like, three or four years? Like, have a have a number one pick at quarterback or a top ten pick at quarterback, have, like, one or two top ten picks at wide receiver, maybe in a first-round pick at running back. It's like, you look at LSU in 2019, Alabama in 2020, and Alabama in 2021, and even Florida had, like, a guy like Kyle Pitts, and Trask was a finalist, a Heisman finalist. Like, it's taken those elite of elite players, I feel like, to beat Georgia. Like you look at Ohio State, like who knows how many first round picks are going to hey, be. Like, like you said, Marvin, Marvin Harrison being out hurts you guys. So again, those elite, talented players, you're right. So Quentin Johnston, like he is a big time dude, but it's like in terms of what he does compared to Ohio State, like another, the main reason Ohio State was able to do what they did is because CJ Stroud was able to get, have enough time mm-hmm. to, to make plays and like, is TCU's offensive line really going to be able to, you know, replicate what Ohio State was able to do? And I just – you also look at Ohio State, what were they, like the, the 12th, like 15th ranked defense in the country yeah. coming into that game? Like TCU's like 70th, like yeah. 50 or 50-something 50 in scoring offense. It's like I think they're 50, 57th or something against the run. It's like if, if Georgia was just going to gash Ohio State the way they did on the ground, like – I mean, it's hard to see TCU necessarily doing better than that. I just want to quickly uh, say something. You said something about Quentin Johnson. Don't disrespect him because what we just seen from your boy. No, Ringo, he's a baller. We just seen from your boy Ringo. I don't. I don't know. He might jump ball him to death. That that Quentin Johnson is going to be a first round pick, if not the first uh, receiver taken this year. So I think that he has. They have the talent on the outside to make some plays. And I think that that Duggan and that team, for some reason, just had – you know how, like, certain seasons what in any sport, there's just a team that has some sort of, like, magic and some sort of, like, weird belief and, like, they just keep going. You're like, I don't know how this team is doing it. TCU is that team this year. Um, they, they believe in that coach. They believe in that style. And I think that you can say that Duggan is not the the talent of the C.J. Strouds, the Joe Burrows, those those top ten picks. But he's a, he's a good college quarterback. And I think that he, the way he plays, he can make some plays. Now, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and predict that they beat Georgia. But I, and I think that Georgia will be a little bit more ready for his style than they were for C.J. Stroud, just because C.J. Stroud never runs. So I think that that kind of surprised Georgia. I don't think they prepared for him to, to scramble around and run. They're going to be prepared for Max Duggan to make those sort of plays. So I think they'll be more ready for it. But I do think that uh, Quinn Johnson on the outside can definitely have some success. And I think that they have that, that, that magic um, we've seen them come back in a lot of games. We've seen them be down and win those games. So I think that that team believes that they can beat anybody and come back on anybody, no matter what the circumstances are. And I think them beating Michigan just gives them another sense of belief in themselves. And the fact, and you know how every team, when they're the underdog, especially when they're this level of underdog, the coach comes in, nobody fucking believes in us. Nobody fucking believes in us. Nobody's picking us. And that, that adds to it. So, I mean, I would not be shocked if this game was a lot closer than people think. Um, I think Georgia will pull out, pull it out in the end. And I think that they might, you know, be up a score and get another score and win by two scores or something like that. But I think it's going to be a dog fight. I think that TCU is ready for a dog fight. And I, and I know Matt mentioned the defense, you know, TCU not having one of the premier defenses um, in college football, but uh, what do you, what are your thoughts on Darnell Washington possibly not playing? Because I, I think know- that, that I think that's huge because of what Darnell Washington does with with George being able to run their their 12 personnel and really not lose anything in terms of if they're going to you know pass or run like he's he's basically a left tackle that runs routes like he's just he's a monster just a unicorn like you never seen anything like him like Bowers right. is the, the the playmaking like Travis Kelsey type tight end yep. but 
Darnell Washington is just, I don't know. He's just absurd. Like, I think we've like only scratched the surface of how good Darnell Washington's going to be. Like once he's a starting tight end on an NFL team somewhere and he's like, you know, actually featured in the offense, I think it's, people are going to see how good he's, he's pretty much always been. I do know someone, just some Georgia fan out there, uh, said he was at the basketball, the Georgia Auburn game last night, w- w- not walking in a boot. Okay. So you know th- that that's big, and maybe he'll be healthy for this one. But um, in terms of one thing, uh, Jalen, you said about Quentin Johnston, I wonder if that plays into <laughs> Keely Ringo's uh, ability better. Like Jamison Williams and <laughs> Marvin Harrison. Sorry, what'd you say? Hey, man, on SSN, it's J.O., man. Come on. J.O., my bad, man. My bad. I always call you J.O., but um, you look at, like, the guys like Jamison Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr., I feel like those guys are, like, another level of, like, quick twitch, like, athlete, like, Agreed. superior, just, like, speed. Quentin Johnson, if you're just throwing up jump balls, I think Ringo is huge for a corner. I think that's actually a, a that's one of the favorite. better – yeah, like his ball skills and getting jump balls. That's, I mean, it's some of the better, some of the bigger plays he's made in his career were on those kind of types of plays. So I think yeah, that, uh, that, that stacks up on. well. Don't get that man dunked on. That's all I'm saying. Don't get that. But man. no, Johnson's a baller. He's going to make some plays. Don't do that. I just, I question TCU's ability to run on Georgia consistently. Like, I mean, that's what they have to do to win. Max Duggan's going to have to put the team on his back, like make some of those plays like he did, like against Kansas State, just like willing his team. And they're all, they're going to have to be able to keep Georgia like uh keep georgia ba- uh, unbalanced with the with i believe i believe tcu is gonna have to score tcu is gonna have to score 60 points to win this game 60 is a lot <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it, and, the, and the grand scheme that, that's that's honestly the only way I, I see it going down they're gonna have to outscore georgia and th- th- their defense is not gonna really hold up let's just be honest um if kendra miller doesn't play then it's only going through the air so, Except for the fact that they do run the ball well, so it's like it's more of an up tempo offense. But you know, maybe maybe they they run the ball well and do kind of drain some of that clock, which Ohio State wasn't necessarily able to do as much because they were just making these explosive plays through the through the through the air. So it felt like that Ohio State Georgia game took forever. Like if Ohio State was able to bleed some of the clock, it's like they probably do win that game. But um, I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Like, TCU is definitely a, a dangerous team. Yeah, so you think. would say those injuries matter a little bit, huh? <laughs> hey, they always do, man. You got to have depth. The injuries are always a part of the game. Hey, oh, no, man. for sure. So, so, so if TCU does win this game, is this the biggest upset in college football national championship history? I mean, this team hasn't won a I mean, championship have, since – they haven't won since have 1938. You'd have to say so. George is being the reigning national champion. This is the fourth time, like since the BCS era, that it was a, a double digit favorite in the national championship game. It was 2000 Florida State, uh, which they lost Oklahoma. O2 was, Mi- was that Winky? Yeah, in Hypo for Oklahoma. Um, and then O2 Ohio State, uh, I think Miami was like an 11 point, 12 point favorite in that one. Mm-hmm. And then um, who was it? Florida State, Auburn was was one that was a bit in Auburn was up, I think, big in that yeah. game until Florida State came back. That's actually the last time an unranked, a preseason unranked team made it to the national championship was that 2013 Auburn team. And then there was one more I'm, I'm blanking on off the top of my head. Oh, uh, it was Alabama, Notre Dame. So in those double digit, there's four double digit uh championship game spreads like those team those favorites are two and two in those games so you know there is it vegas doesn't know everything they are pre- I, I have seen like 90 90 percent of the money i think has been on tcu it's mm-hmm. the line's down to 12 and a half at this point so uh i don't know i don't know how i feel like i think georgia could probably win by two touchdowns i'll with it being down to 12 and a half i'd probably take georgia uh to cover, cover that, that spread yeah I think, uh, I think, I mean, I think obviously TCU being the underdog, I think they're going to pull out every stop, everything they got. They're going to throw at you guys, trick plays, anything they can and try to uh, just move the chains, get some yards, get some touchdowns, some points on the board. One thing I do want to give a shout out to Georgia is just like you said, Todd Munkin, I think he comes prepared for these big games and he always brings something new that the other team isn't, you know, prepared for. Um, so I think that Georgia, I would, I would take Georgia if I had to put money down, I'd probably take Georgia as well. Um, just because they're, they're battle tested. Um, the fact that they were down against Ohio State, 
with that explosive offense, they came back. Stetson Bennett being what would I say uh, the best quarterback that Georgia's had, and just that moxie that he has. It almost seems like like his story. It, it just this will add to his story, like two national championships for a kid who's a walk on, not supposed to be there. Like it, it, it just seems like it's written for him to have this just amazing college football story. So I think this is going to add to it. Um, so I would go with Georgia. Los, who would you, you would take, Georgia or TCU? No, I'm no, I'm no fool. I got to go with Georgia. <laughs> I'm no fool. I'm uh, at the end of the day, you want to say TCU? We all love a good underdog story. Um, but I think Georgia's just got it's just too much. It's just too much for TCU and and. Yeah, TCU proved a lot. The only only thing that gets me is TCU had uh, Max Duggan threw those three picks and they still won. Um, I don't think he can play that same way against Georgia and win. So uh, that, that that's my biggest thing. Um, the turnovers it, have been an issue for Georgia in a couple ga- couple different games this year. Mm-hmm. So I, I I just think that that's one factor of it. But I mean, I, I you gotta go Georgia. I, I don't know if it's by two tugs. I, I'll say G- Georgia by I'll say Georgia by seven. Um, I don't I don't think it'll be a blowout by any means, um, but I don't I don't see TCU being able to win this game. I think, I think TCU is going to come to play. I think it's going to be a really good game. Um, but I, yeah, like you said, I, I would have to go with Georgia, but I think that TCU is definitely going to come to play. And I think that that's been their mantra all year is just nobody believes in them. Uh, they come from behind. They're just like, you know, the cardiac kids. So I think that they're going to definitely come to play, pull out all the stops. I think Duggan is going to do – he's he's going to put his heart on the line. This is kind of mm-hmm. how he plays. Like you said, the Tim Tebow-esque play. I think he's going to go out there and just do anything he possibly can. And I definitely think Ringo's about to get head topped a couple times. I think <laughs> Jackson could moss that man. <laughs> so don't be surprised when that happens. No, I think, I think it'll definitely be a good game. I think TCU's offense has been like – They've been legit all year. They, they've they got multiple ways to beat you. They're two of the more balanced teams in the country, honestly, in terms of running and passing. Um, but you just look at Georgia's offense, and it's just – they have so many different ways to beat you. It's like Kenny McIntosh, I don't feel like necessarily gets a lot of love because of the way Georgia spreads the the, the wealth so much as yeah. running back. But dude's got over – he's almost 800 yards rushing, 500 yards receiving, like 12 touchdowns on the year, like – he, he's a baller and then you got like Bowers and Washington but there's just so many receivers it's like they Georgia doesn't have that elite George Pickens guy on this team that Marvin Harrison Jr but they they have like seven or eight options and you saw Arian Smith is like he had like five catches on the season coming to this game and he has 100 yards and a touchdown on Ohio State and A.D. Mitchell was probably the number one receiver I, I would say easily the number one receiver on the team coming into this year and he's missed most of the season so him being healthy now too it's like george just got so many ways to beat you and i i can't see them consistently stopping this offense definitely not more than ohio state did no i i'm, I'm right there with you i agree last thing i want to say um is to all those uh referees the guys wearing stripes out there if it's targeting call that targeting that's all i'm gonna say if it's targeting call that targeting bro don't 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 swallow the whistle now in, in championship games you feel me like i don't know what we're doing this here. is from targeting. a hurt osu fan just keep that in mind bro, this is hey, from a hurt OSU injuries fan. The refs bro like can we just catch a fucking break out here like my boy cj Stroud pulls the game of his life out ryan day finally fucking shows up in a, a fucking big game and, and and they just do us in bro they do us in but that's that's besides the point matt we really appreciate you uh coming on the show with us man second time we definitely gonna have to have you back um go ahead let the people know where they can check out uh the chase thomas podcast and uh hear more from you yeah man chase thomas podcast we talk uh we call it the full ride uh twice a week i'm on there uh we every uh every, we post it every monday every thursday talking college football so uh yeah man i uh, i appreciate you guys having me on uh-huh.